This is Greenberry. We've been here before, several times. Today I'm just passing through, going somewhere else. Not a lot to report here. This is the William L. Finley National Wildlife Refuge. Back in June and a few other times, we went to the Snag Boat Bend unit of the Finley Wildlife Refuge, which is only administratively connected. It's on the other side of the river, a different ecosystem because it's riverfront. This is wetland with a small creek, and this is the much larger section. I've been here before. The last time I was here was in December. This is the first video capture I have of it. And it's a, uh, hey, there's a lot going on. I can hear the birds. I can see the birds. Um, and in winter, it's a little bit less interesting than it was in June. This is another place I missed going to in the spring or summer when it could have been very lovely. It was a busy summer, you might have noticed. Um, anyway, this is just the entrance. We have a boardwalk here. I'm going to be going through it, seeing some other stuff, and then I have something else planned. This is Muddy Creek. For once, I don't have to guess. And just from this, we can probably see where it got its name. This is the main creek that goes through this wildlife refuge. It joins the Mary's River in the Herbert Farm and Natural Area, where I went a few weeks ago, and uh, I would guess that this is a very slow and windy creek, which is why it's muddy. As you can see here, it's just kind of like a lake and why there's a wildlife refuge. Um, also here, it's not channelized. It's let to be a wetland with many side channels and um, overflow lakes and the like, which is very good for the wildlife. It's not the most beautiful thing in a classical way, but I certainly appreciate it. And now we're going to continue up the road. Here's a large pond, perhaps somewhat artificial. It looks like there's a berm around it, maybe a pump on the other end. There's birds out there. They look like white birds, perhaps pelicans or egrets. Perhaps many different types of birds. And I'm curious to go there. And here it says hiking, but no vehicles. No hunting. Over here, area closed November 1st to March 31st. Which I kind of dislike that it says hiking, but then it says area closed in a different sign, a different area. A little bit confusing, but I'm going to assume that this area is closed. And it's something where I could probably go there and it wouldn't cause too many problems, but kind of a Kantian categorical imperative here. I don't want every visitor to this park to go over there and scare the birds away, so I'm not going to either. I'm just going to enjoy them from afar. This is the other end of the wildlife refuge. Here's a map of the wildlife refuge. We're right here. So we came in from there to there. There's a map of the entire United States in case that's needed, in case you forgot you're in Oregon. And uh, here's the exit to the refuge, or the entrance and the exit. And here's Bell Fountain Road. We've been there before. So I'll actually say what is in plan, which is, as we remember, I've walked everywhere between Vancouver, Washington and Corvallis over many years and even decades. And I was thinking, what's the next step in that? Problem is between Corvallis and Eugene, there's about 40 miles of road. And I don't want to walk it all in one day. So what I'm thinking of doing, and who knows how long this will take when I'll get around to it, 
is Bell Fountain Road parallels 99 West, which isn't a really good road to walk on. I don't know if Bell Fountain is either, so I was thinking I'm going to take my bicycle, ride down, and then walk back a few miles and uh, see how many little strips like that I can stitch together. So this is the next step in the logic. And also I'll just see what's along the road. We're walking along the road. We'll be walking along it for a bit more. Over on our right, we're still on the border of the wildlife refuge, not to a place that is accessible, but that's still wildlife refuge over there. Another time of the year I could actually open that, but it doesn't look like I can right now. So I just passed the edge of the wildlife refuge over there, been walking for a while, and I will be walking for a while longer along this road. It's a pretty good day for a walk. It's December, but it's a little bit warmer than usual. Perhaps due to climate change, perhaps just due to variation in the weather. And it's a perfect day for a walk because it's not too cold, not too warm. I don't have problems staying hydrated, but my fingers aren't frozen. So I'm just going to keep walking and there's still another two hours of daylight. Here's an electrical transformer substation just humming away in the middle of the country. And to me this just is, makes me think about what is country, what is rural, because we can't really define it by lack of human imprint, because here we have this pretty wide, well-kept road, we have an electrical station, we have all of these things, but we don't have human habitation. So the question is, is when we have a place that's very much inside the web of human influence and our structures, do we call that rural? Obviously in some ways yes, but maybe in some ways no. Just a random thought. This is Greenberry Road leading off in that direction. Right here we can see that traffic has already gotten a little bit more busy. We have yield signs. We have flashing things. We have a school sign. So we're kind of re-entering civilization, so to speak. And this was my original goal to get this far. I might try to go another 10 minutes. Right now it's 320. Uh, so I have an hour and 10 minutes more of light. So I might try to go a little bit further up that road because that will make, when I have to do the next leg, it will make it that much shorter. This is Llewellyn Road and Bell Fountain Road. This was my stretch goal about five miles from where I started. It's about 340, 40 more minutes of light. And I can walk a lot further than I think I've been five miles today, but I've also had to walk my bicycle along like this. And that can be kind of tiring. And also I'm walking by the side of the road, traffic along gravel. So this is an optimum conditions for me but I got something out of it. I hope you did too. It is kind of anticlimactic. Here's this great journey and I'm just kind of gonna stop here at this intersection. It's been a good walk, but there's also a lot of little worries that build up. I forgot my bike lock, so I don't know if I can stop at a store on my way back and get food. Also, I don't know if I'll get home before dark, but before dark I will get to a place where I can walk safely at least. So that's my trip. No other updates, just that this is beautiful. And in a way it's beautiful because it's scary. The sun is going down. I'm just uh, two miles outside of town, but there's still a, a chill in the air, so to speak.